We're living in a culture that attempts to explain everything away. I actually prefer to experience life, to live life, and then also to reveal how others can experience life fully. Isn't that the point of living? To experience it fully? In its fullness? Like balls deep in life? See, the salty teachers of yesterday shoveling their beliefs drenched in propaganda into the minds of the thirsty are a dying breed. They're coming to the end. I know it might not seem like it, but I'm telling you they're coming to an end. People are waking up and they're realizing more than ever that what they have to say is old news. That that old hat stuff is not working anymore. It's not good. It's not something we want to invest our time and our energy in. It's coming to an end. These dusty old potato approach to communicating and teaching has run its course. You don't have to be told what to think, how to feel, or what to believe because the truth is already innately yours. It's within you already. Instead of telling others, if you're a teacher, you're a communicator, and we all are teachers and we're all students. Instead of telling others what to believe, today's enlightened communicators are learning how to draw out of each beautiful divine expression what they've always known deep down in the pit of their stomach, intuitively known. Draw out what somebody knows. Instead of confronting their doctrinal, dogmatic madness, whether that be political, governmental, religious, don't confront that. You don't need to. The truth doesn't need to confront anything because the truth is, is very malleable. In other words, it's very, it flows. It'll take any shape to reach you. <laughs> but learn to draw out of others what has always been within. Now, I will agree that this new art of communication is far more chill than the aggressive, old, dogmatic approach. And it's hard to believe that there are still many in the world that are buying the agenda-driven BS from news stations like CNN or Fox News, schools, colleges, platforms of all kinds, and pulpits all around the world. And the craziest thing about all of that to me is that the ones buying it will in one breath recite the BS as if it's true and in the next say that you can't believe whatever you hear. Our minds have been conditioned to look for the solid and the stable. We're literally living in a time in a world in our country and in the world in a culture that is looking for solid, stable things. We're trying to find a st solid, stable relationship, solid, stable work or a job. We've been programmed to seek comfort, the comfort of definition and doctrine, when living in true rest is found in the flow of being. In him, this unknown God, Paul said, we live and move and find being. We've all been trying to build our house on the solid rock instead of realizing that, the rock, that we are one with the rock and the sea, that we are in it and it is in us. The rock and the sea aren't at odds with one another. As a matter of fact, they work in perfect harmony. You can't have one without the other. But it's the house that we're grinding away to build that's the problem. That's the element of the parable or of the story that's not natural. And yet, that seems to always be the focal point of the world we've been conditioned to live in. The Bible says that the wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. And this is how it is with everyone who realizes or is born of spirit. How gnarly is it to be like the wind? To flow is to live, to live is to flow. This lifestyle of flow is fucking lit. Don't try to grasp it. You can't grasp the wind, you can't capture the wind. And don't try to become it because you can't become what you already are. Instead, just be here in the perfection of this moment and rest from your labor, rest from your work, rest from your stress, rest from your anxiety. In this place, you are at peace. The noise around you becomes absolutely irrelevant. The noise of 2020, of COVID-19, of uh, economic disaster, of food shortages becomes irrelevant. 
Because the storm of 2020 might destroy your little house. But you're so much more than the little house. <laughs> you remember, we are only at odds with something when we've identified as something else. When you let go of identifying as that thing, you're free. These somethings of life, houses and cars, the little lives that we've built for ourselves, these things come and go. But the wind, my friends, will continue to flow. Have a beautiful day and remember, the more you awaken, the more you play.